Hello, my name is Noah and today we will be creating animations like these 100% inside of Fusion. While this tutorial is quite long, all individual parts of this animation are very simple and easy to understand. On our way to rendering, we will be learning how to create a simple procedural 2D animation, create an image particle emitter, create interactive 3D volumetric god rays and composite all of that together. Here and there we will utilize some simple expressions and I will show you some handy shortcuts along the way. After this tutorial you will feel much more confident in creating motion graphics in Fusion and working in Fusion in general. While I am using Fusion standalone, everything I am doing is possible inside of DaVinci Resolve, including the free version. I will try to explain everything we're doing while keeping this somewhat short, but even if you don't understand everything we're doing the first time, you will get to know many different facets of Fusion. Before starting, if you prefer a text tutorial, there is a text version of this tutorial and composition available on my website. Let's start by adding an ellipse mask. Press Ctrl Spacebar or whatever your add to a shortcut is. Press 1 or 2 to view this in your preferred viewer. This will be the base of our animation. And first of all, we don't want the solid, we want an outline. So go into your inspector and uncheck solid. We need to increase the border width to actually see an outline. I will choose 0 0.005. Let's make it easier for us to see our spline by opening this in our second viewer and disabling the controls by pressing Ctrl K. Let's go back into the other viewer and grab the green control line to decrease the width. I will be choosing 0.2. Next, I want to increase the resolution and change our aspect ratio from 16 by 9 to a square. So I'll go into the image tab of our spline and change the output size to custom. I will choose 2000 by 2000. Next, we will add in a transform node. Fusion will automatically connect our ellipse mask node to our blue mask input of our transform. But we want this to be an image, so pipe the ellipse into the yellow background input. Everything we will do on this transform node is to move our ellipse slightly up. So for organization reason, let's rename this by hitting F2. I will call this trans up and grab the handle and move our ellipse up. There we go. Now we will use a new feature from Fusion 16.2, animatable length of splines. So go into the first tab of your ellipse node called controls. If we move the slider of the length parameter, we see what this does. So go to the first frame, yours will probably be zero. I changed my default first frame to one and set the length to zero. Set a keyframe by hitting the little keyframe button next to your length parameter. Next, I will go to frame 160 and drag the slider to 1. Fusion has automatically created a new keyframe and this is our animation right now. If you are working in Fusion standalone like I am, you might want to change your composition length. We won't need 1000 frames for this project and it will be easier to navigate if we decrease the global end time. I set mine to 400. Let's make our animation slightly more fancy. We want to remap the animation to ease in and out. Open the spline editor in the right upper side, click on length to see our animation path. Now we will use a series of shortcuts. First we will use Ctrl F to focus the view on our animation path, then Ctrl A to select all our keyframes and finally Shift S to smooth our spline. The default values are still too tame and these handles aren't particularly good at increasing the values. Hit T to open a little window where we can more easily change our ease handles without messing with the tangents, like this. We will crank both numbers up until we are happy.
This looks much better. But this is still only a single spline and we want this to open up. So let's duplicate our animation by adding a duplicate node. By default we won't see any change. And this is because we are creating a duplicate of our image exactly in the same position in space and time. So right now we have two copies that are exactly on top of each other. We could simply increase the angle and there you can see there's our copy. And I will increase the number of copies quickly to something like 9. And there we see our problem. If we ever want to change our copy number at the end of our animation, this could be very problematic because this wouldn't update. And we have to change the whole angle animation again. So this is where we will use our first expression. Right click on angle and choose expression. We will type in 360 divided, use a slash for that and use the, this handy little whip next to our expression and drag and drop it to our copies parameter. Now, no matter how many copies we have, this will always have the right angle. I will quickly go back into the transform node and change the position slightly until I'm happy with the placement. That's better. If we look at our animation right now, we see that all of our copies are animating at the same time and we still have no rotation. We will deal with the rotation first. The thing is, we won't be able to animate our angle since it's already connected to the expression. That's why we will have to create our own animation slider. Right click on your duplicate node and hit edit controls. This new window will pop up. I want to have a rotation multiplier. So I will call it rot mal for, for rotation multiplier. For the type, number will be fine. And we want this to appear on our controls tab. So I will choose controls. For the default value, we'll choose 1. The range should be from 0 to 1. Like most parameters in Fusion, we can animate further than that, except if we change the allowed value but we don't want to limit ourselves, so just keep this blank. For the type of control, I will choose a slider control. And the center should be 0 0.5. And for the steps, I will choose 0 0.005, but honestly, this doesn't really change anything. There we have our slider, which right now doesn't do anything. And this is because it's not connected to anything. So we will do that by typing in an asterisk or multiply and type in rot mal for our rotation multiplier. And if we move the slider now, we can see that it's working. And now we can animate our expression. Let's go back to our first frame, set our slider to zero and set a keyframe. And now, just like before, we will go further down in our timeline and we will set another keyframe with the slider at one. Now our animation is rotating. And to keep this organized, we will take our time to rename our nodes. This is the base of animation, so we'll change my duplicate node to, to base and my ellipse to base. Now to offset the animation, we will change the time offset on our duplicate base. Since I have already done this, I know what numbers I like. I will go to frame 110 and type in minus 80. And of course, set a keyframe. Then I will go further down the timeline to frame 295 and I will set the time offset to its default value of zero by pressing the little dot below the slider. This is how you can reset all sliders in Fusion to its default values. Speaking of dots, we can already see the start of our animation before it's actually animating. We will change this by animating the border width on our ellipse node, which is now called base. So go into your base and animate the border width. Go to your first frame and set this to zero. Set a keyframe. Go to a 
later frame like 5 and set this to our initial value of 0 0.005. The dots are gone, but we can't actually judge our animation that well because we can't see it in real time. And this is because our playback speed is very low. We can fix this by hitting the proxy button below the viewer. This will scale down the image resolution only for viewing. The final render will not be affected and now our animation is running in real time. Now that we have real time playback and our animation is pretty much done, we should add some color. Create a new background node. By default this will be the resolution of your project settings, in my case Full HD. So we need to change this to be the same as our base. We will do this exactly as before in the image tab of our background node and changing the width and height to the same resolution. In my case the depth is already set to a 32 bit. You won't need 32 bit, but I would advise it to at least 16 bit float for this. In the color tab, we will change this background type to gradient, that is radial. You can use whatever colors you like, but I will choose a nice blue. And as the second color black, I will position this to the top. I will copy and paste this until I have three background nodes with different colors. In my case, blue, yellow and red. Now. We will combine these three by grabbing the wire of our yellow background node and drag and drop it over the output of our blue background node. Fusion will automatically create a merge node and combine our backgrounds. We want to do an add operation by dragging the alpha gain slider to zero. We repeat the same with the third background. But how do we get this color to animation? What we want to do is to clear the pixels from our background, except where animation is happening. We can do that by taking a channel boolean node and setting its operation to clear. Right now it will clear away everything, so we will take our animation and pipe that into the blue mask input of the channel boolean. We need to invert this. There are several ways to do that, but I chose to use another channel boolean with the operation set to negative. I'll quickly rename these two to channel boolean clear and channel boolean negative. Looking at our animation, I feel like we should add an ease to our rotation. We do that exactly as before by selecting our duplicate base and opening the spline editor. Now, we have several animated parameters. To make it easier to find our rotation, we click on the three dots on the upper right side of the spline editor and select show only selected tool. In the list on the left we will deselect every parameter except rot mul, which is a rotation multiplier. And now the same as before, Control F, Control A, Shift S, and we can increase both numbers again. This looks much better. Next. We want to bring this animation into 3D. We do that by adding in an image plane 3D. As you can see, we are in the 3D workspace of Fusion now. To combine this with a moving camera, we will add in a merge 3D and a camera 3D to this merge. Since we are, I have already done this, I know that I will be having issues with the image plane clipping. So I will go to my camera and change the near clipping to the lowest possible. We definitely want to look through the camera while we are animating it. So in one of our two viewers we will right click on the perspective text on the bottom right corner and select our camera 3D. Let's drag the camera out a little bit and change the focal length. I chose 21 but as, as everything else in this, this is up to you. We'll go to the Transform tab and select Use Target. This will control the rotation of our camera and will make it much more easier for us to animate it. 
still in the transform tab, we can right click on our translation text and select animate translate group. This will activate keyframing on all three parameters. We will do the same for the target. Now we can animate our camera just as we like. I will speed through this process a little bit. This movement will probably look very janky, so we will smooth this again just like before. Make sure all parameters are selected and hit our favorite key combos, Ctrl F, Ctrl A and Shift S. I will select the last keyframe and increase the ease in. This looks better, but I want an even steeper curve. So I select the second to last keyframe and increase the ease out value. Now we have a much shorter but stronger acceleration. But now we need to render our 3D animation to a 2D image, just as we would in a 3D application like Houdini or Blender. For this we will use the render 3D node. I will rename this to R3D base. The checkered background is irritating me and since I know that we will render out the final animation on a dark background, I will click on the three dots on the upper right side of the viewer and I will uncheck checker underlay. Now we don't see our alpha as in checker, but it's black. And now we are done with our base animation. Due to the length of the tutorial, I've decided to split this up into three parts. And in the next part, we'll be looking at the particles. See you there.